out just a few things from your budget can save you hundreds of dollars every month. In this video, I'll be sharing eight money-saving hacks that will help you cut down your expenses and keep more of what you make. These are all money-saving hacks that helped me pay off $80,000 of student loans in just a few years, and they're tips that I still use to this day. Whether you want to get out of debt faster, save up to buy a house, or retire early, these tips will help you reach your financial goals faster. Best of all, these are all things that you can cut from your budget and not miss at all. I talk a lot about investing on my channel, but before you can start investing and putting your money to work, you first have to have money to invest. So with these money saving hacks, my hope is that you'll be able to come up with some more money to invest. And even if these money saving hacks save you just $100 a month, that is better than nothing. If you can save $100 a month and invest that money instead, that money could grow to over $67,000 in 20 years. And in 30 years, it could grow to $191,000. So every dollar you save makes a difference. So without further ado, my first money-saving hack is to switch to free online-only bank accounts. If you have your checking account or savings account at a brick-and-mortar bank, like Chase or Wells Fargo or Bank of America, you are most likely paying a bunch of unnecessary fees, like monthly maintenance fees, overdraft fees, you name it. Not to mention, you're probably getting next to nothing in interest. Wells Fargo's everyday checking account charges a $10 monthly maintenance fee and a $35 fee for overdrafts. Compare this to a free online-only checking account, like the Fidelity Cash Management account, $0 monthly maintenance fee, $0 overdraft fee, free ATM withdrawals all over the US. Hello, it's a no-brainer to switch over. Wells Fargo savings account charges a $5 monthly maintenance fee and pays 0.01% in interest. That's just insulting. Compare this to a free online-only savings account like the Capital One 360 Performance Savings Account. $0 monthly maintenance fee and right now it pays 1.7% interest. There's a lot of other great online-only banking options out there, such as Ally, Betterment Every Day, and Vero. And if you switch over to these, you won't pay any banking fees and you'll get paid more in interest. Another money-saving hack is to only travel when you can use your miles to pay for your flights. Nine times out of 10 when I book flights, I'm using airline miles that I've racked up with a credit card. Ever since I moved to Denver, about three years ago, I find myself flying back home a lot to the East Coast just to see friends and family. And I'm telling you, I have not paid for a flight in years. Last time, my flight cost a whopping $5.60 for taxes and fees because I paid for it with miles. Another time, it cost me $11.20. And the other time, it cost me another $11.20. I have the United Mileage Plus credit card and I really love it. When I first signed up for it, United was offering a 75,000 mile sign up bonus. So that paid for my round trip flight to Berlin in the summer of 2018. There's tons of blogs and articles online that teach you how to hack your way to free travel with credit card sign up bonuses. So definitely look into using credit cards intelligently so that you can travel for free and still travel without breaking the budget. My next money saving hack for you is to start making your own coffee at home. Don't get me wrong, I am a huge coffee snob and I love my fancy $5 oat milk lattes with the pretty swirly designs on top. But if you buy one of these every morning, that's $150 a month. $150 a month is $1,800 a year. If you invested $1,800 into an index fund, that could turn into $4,605 in 10 years. It could be $11,783 in 20 years. Girl, don't even get me started. I used to buy coffee every single morning, but now I've changed my ways because nowadays I make my own coffee with a French press and I buy my own oat milk and I drink an amazingly delicious homemade cup of coffee every morning at a fraction of the cost. You can get really fancy with this and even get a milk frother so you can still have your foamy lattes. So if you're a coffee lover like me, you'll end up saving a lot of money if you just learn how to make it at home. Because little stuff like this really adds up over time. Money saving hack number four is to buy secondhand. Okay, so there's definitely things you probably wouldn't want to buy secondhand, like mattresses, hairbrushes, underwear, things like that. But there are lots of things that you can buy secondhand that will work just as perfectly and cost a fraction of the price. For example, cars. 
The value of a car drops significantly the moment you drive it off the lot. Just when it's not considered a new car anymore, it automatically becomes like 50% cheaper. And actually my first car, I don't have a car currently, but when I was in high school and I got my license and wanted to get a car, I had to buy it with my own money. So I was waiting tables at the time and the only one I could afford was like, you know, a second hand car. So my first car was a 1997 Mazda Miata that I bought for $5,000. I found it on Craigslist or something like that. And it served me very, very well. I did not miss having a new car at all. It really served its purpose and cost a fraction of the price. Something else you can buy secondhand are books. So I buy used books on Amazon all the time. They're always cheaper than the new version and a lot of those sellers offer free shipping as well. So always try to buy used books whenever possible. Better yet, get a library card and get your books for free. You can also buy clothes secondhand. Shops like Buffalo Exchange and Crossroads Trading are amazing for finding designer stuff at ridiculously low prices. Because designer clothing is rarely on sale, so if you really want to get designer clothing, then this is a really cool hack. I found Jimmy Choo shoes, tops from BCBG, and a bunch of other quality, like new fashion items from stores like this. It's amazing what a markup you pay just to get something new, especially when it comes to clothing and cars. And not to mention buying secondhand clothing is much better for the environment. The fashion industry is one of the top causes of climate change as well as plastic in the oceans. Okay, also electronics. Facebook Marketplace is a great place to find electronics. I actually just found this out myself pretty recently because not too long ago I bought a pair of brand new AirPods for like $150 but right after I found listings on Facebook Marketplace where I could get them for like $75. It's AirPods. It's going to be the same whether it's used or new. Bottom line, always check secondhand stores or online marketplaces such as Facebook, eBay, and Craigslist before you buy certain things. It'll save you lots of money. Another money-saving hack is to stop buying bottled water. Carry around your own water bottle instead. Install a good reverse osmosis water filter in your kitchen sink or just get a Brita filter. Bottled water is not only horrible for the environment because of all the plastic and energy that goes into it, but it's just a huge waste of money. Drinking water is basically free, so it makes no sense to pay for something that's free. Get a cool water bottle like this one, the Dot Water Bottle by Joseph & Joseph. It tracks how much water you're drinking, and then fill it up before you leave the house and drink from it throughout the day. Bottled water can cost up to $2 a bottle, which adds up to $60 a month, and over the course of 10 years, that's $7,200 spent on bottled water when it could have just been zero. So don't buy bottled water. Just don't. Here's another money-saving hack. Instead of buying commercial cleaning products for your house, make your own. A simple 50-50 solution of vinegar and water or a little bit of baking soda mixed with water cleans glass, bathroom tiles, countertops, floors, you name it. You do not need to buy fancy packaged cleaning products from the store. Because before Febreze and Windex came around, your grandma probably used good old-fashioned vinegar and or baking soda as well. So if it was good enough for her back then, it's good enough now. Also, if you're wondering if vinegar is going to leave a smell in your house, it doesn't. The vinegar smell evaporates in a few minutes and you won't even know. You can also mix in essential oils like lavender or orange to make your place smell nice. It is a lot healthier than the toxic chemicals and fragrances in commercial cleaning products. Using basic ingredients you already have in your kitchen to make your own cleaning products is going to save you money and make you healthier. Going along the same theme of using natural homemade products at home, there's also a ton of ways to save money on beauty products. The beauty industry is a $532 billion industry, but so many of the things that women and men spend money on are totally not necessary. For example, I've been using apple cider vinegar on my hair for years, and it's the most amazing conditioner that I've ever used. A bottle of apple cider vinegar costs like $5, and just one tiny capful diluted with water makes my hair super shiny, thick, and manageable. I totally cannot live without it. Commercial hair conditioners, not only are they expensive, but they're full of toxic chemicals, and they've always left my hair either really flat or frizzy. It's just never been good. Something else you can use is coconut oil. I use coconut oil instead of body lotion, I use it as makeup remover, and I use it as a hair mask every few months. And it works like magic. 
and you can buy buckets of coconut oil for cheap. You can also find a ton of recipes online for face masks using just simple kitchen ingredients like honey, yogurt, and cucumber. It's actually really fun to experiment, and you can really go down a rabbit hole with these recipes. Especially since beauty products are things that we use a lot and have to replace often, it's gonna save a lot of money over the long run to just make your own stuff instead. Money saving hack number eight is to do weekly meal prep. Block out one weekend afternoon to get groceries and prepare something easy and delicious to grab during the week. Every Sunday, I always make a batch of green smoothies, which I have for breakfast every morning, and I just keep them in the freezer until the night before. Smoothies are super easy to grab and take with you to work, not to mention they're super healthy and good for you. When I was living in New York City, I used to buy breakfast every morning, an omelet, a coffee, things like that. So that's like $10 a day just for breakfast, at a minimum. And if you also eat out for lunch and dinner, we're talking like $40 a day on food. That's $1,200 a month. If you took just $500 of that money and invested that in your Roth IRA every month, you would retire a millionaire. If you've never done meal prep before and the idea of cooking is kind of intimidating to you, I suggest starting just with making your own breakfast. You don't have to be a good cook to do it. You can just make a simple smoothie and take it to work. For your other meals, you can also make a big batch of soup like lentil stew or chicken noodle soup and then you can just take that to work for lunch or heat it up for dinner when you get home from work. I do this all the time and it is such a lifesaver. Having good food ready and just easily available will prevent you from ordering Uber Eats or Seamless a little too often. Not to mention, it's probably a lot healthier. So just look up a few good staple recipes learn how to make them, and start doing your weekly meal prep. All it takes is a couple hours every Sunday, and it's gonna save you a bunch of money. My final money-saving hack is to work out at home instead of paying for expensive gym memberships and fitness classes. My favorite part of all this is that it actually saves on commuting time. If you factor in the time it takes to go to the gym and back, you probably have to block out at least two hours to get a workout in. And because time is money, if you can just work out in your living room, you're already saving money just by saving an hour of your time not commuting to the gym. When I lived in New York City, I used to take classes at Barry's Boot Camp, which cost almost $40 a class. Now, I mostly just work out at home with Beachbody Online, which is a streaming service that has a huge library of fitness DVDs. My favorite one is Insanity. That got me into the best shape of my life and it's a better workout than you'll get anywhere, I guarantee. It really will kick your butt. Also, instead of doing cardio at the gym, try running outside. It's much better for you because you get fresh air, and you know, I'm not telling you to give up your gym membership or to give up all the classes that you like to take, but if you're paying for something that you could also do for free or for cheaper, just consider swapping some of it out. That's just a general rule of thumb for saving money. Don't pay for things that you can get for free. So that's it for my nine money-saving hacks. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you have some other cool money-saving hacks that you'd like to share, I'd love to hear them as well. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because every Wednesday I post a new and awesome video about all things money and investing. I appreciate you and thank you so much for taking this journey with me. I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Bye.